A new year of programming is getting underway at Hibernian Hall in Roxbury with events in dance, music, and theater. To tell us what's planned and about a preview night on March 5th are two guests from the hall's operations, the program director, Ola Wumi Akin Wumi, and the technical director, Asad Hardwick. Uh, thank you both for being with us. Thank you for having us. I want to start with uh, Ola because uh, the, the event on March 5th is a preview night. I'm not sure if I remember this from past years, but, mm -hmm. but why have the preview? Yes, because in past years, you know, as Hibernian Hall, we're always producing events besides also hosting events. This is a great time for us to basically highlight to all of our community members and let everybody know what we have in store for the season. So this is going to be an annual event where we're going to basically put together what we're working with all our partners. Asad, you've been working in this building since 2005, if, if I'm correct, and, and uh, uh, you know, it, it's a landmark, it's historic, but it, it's also come a long way since you, you've been working there as far as the, the technical apparatus. What's been changing there? So every, I want to say every year we've always tried to up the ante in terms of how we support productions. Um, as you know, in, the, in theater, we need lights, sound, logistics, and, you know, from 2005 to 2020, we have all the support we need to produce at a higher level. Um, even within the past two years, we've got, cam we've invested in cameras, we've invested in LED lights versus conventional, and now the sound in the space is so advanced that if we wanted to host a concert with a major artist, we're prepared to do it. And I guess the thing that's important here is, is that, you know, this was not uh, designed originally for things like stage productions. It was a music hall. Right. Uh, so I guess with, with stage, you've got to make sure that people in the audience can clearly hear what's being said by people. Right. So, and, and again, we're, we're, we're not a theater, right? And we're a ballroom. But because of the technology that we've invested in, the, the space is used um, for many capacities. Um, you know, like I said, theater to concerts to civic engagements and being ready for what's thrown at us is, is very important in terms of having successful events and productions. Oh, the, one of the things that's planned for this year is a production of A Long Day's Journey in Tonight. Uh, and this is going to be unusual, at least partially because of the cast. Uh, tell me a little bit about the thinking behind this. So, yeah, so um, Diane Walters and Fort Point Channel Theater. So they're basically bringing this um, classic production and they're going to do an all African-American cast. Um, so even though it's a very heavy classic um, production they're going to put together, it's one way to highlight the community in a different way of face of looking at it. Now, of course, one thing about this play by, by O'Neill, you know, this is an Irish-American mm -hmm. playwright, uh, and he's talking about people who were somewhat on the margins uh, a century ago almost, uh, yeah. and they're sort of contending with the mainstream. I guess that is something that you can transpose to, to other people, I guess. Yes, and especially it's happening at Hibernian Hall, which has a lot of history with the Hibernians. So that was one way that it would give a great feel and help with the storyline of the play that's taking place here. Now, you also have another uh, theater production coming up as well that uh, deals with the health issue too, right? Yes, so we have Mary McLeod, who's going to be basically, she's a playwright of Smoke Oysters. And that was a play that was already um, previewed at TC Squared. So we loved it and loved the idea of talking about Alzheimer's and dementia, and I feel that's a great way to educate folks about in the community what that is, and a very, you know, storyline and very intimate um, story play at the Hibernian Hall. It's sad. I, I, I sometimes picture you because you're, you're in charge of the technical apparatus. Is that while all these things are going on, you're sort of up there looking down on things. Uh, what does that feel like for you? I mean, it's comfortable. I was never the guy to be in the spotlight. I'm always behind the scenes and figuring out the logistics. So, you know, during the production, I'm up looking down at everything. But when we're building the show, I'm very hands-on, you know, at all levels. Um, and again, I really enjoy the work I do. Um, setting up lights, right, setting up sound and finding out what makes sense in terms of transitions, right? Those things, uh, that's what I enjoy. Well, what about the music that's planned for this season? Uh, what, what can we look forward to? Oh, yes. I mean, right now we're highlighting four of our great partners that we're going to be um, working with throughout the year. We have VLA Dance, which is Contemporary Dance Group, and they're basically going to give us a nice highlight of what they're going to be doing with our young people. And so that's going to be part of our summer program dance program that we're doing. Then we have Castle for Skins, which is a repeating uh, resident that been doing a lot of what work with us and they're going to do a highlight of what past and for the future, what they have going on, which is Black Love. 
And then we have Roxbury Prep um, Preparatory High School, which is going to do a musical of Beauty and the Beast. And then lastly, which will be Long Journeys um, Day into the Night, which will do a nice preview of what's going on. Uh, what about the, the group working with young people? What's going on, especially for the young people? Um, I mean, just to add on with Assad, I mean, we're going to be highlighting what we're going to be doing with tech. Um, this one is specifically going to be on dance and going to learn a little bit of ballet. So we like to mix it up a little bit, um, maybe some acting, writing, um, anything you want to... Yeah, and if I may add, it, it's also just creating an opportunity in, in various ways, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what it takes to create a production or host an event, right? We have spaces where young people can uh, play these roles where it can either be an internship or lead to employment. Mm -hmm. And even given, you know, some of the partners that we're producing with, they even have spots for young people to either be in the production, right? Whether they're, it's a play, they want to learn how to be an actor, um, the dance, they want to dance. Um, you know, so from producing it to being in the production or what it takes to coordinate and organize a production, right? We, in, in many cases, we create opportunities for young people to be hands-on in these roles. Have you ever experienced that? You know, some young person comes in, uh, uh, maybe it's in the summer, they've never done this before, they don't know what it's all about, and then they sort of move along to a higher level. Have you, have you seen that? All the time. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we throw uh, youth in the fire and they fall, a lot of them fall in love with it, and then they'll either come back in the fall and say, what are you guys doing, how can I support? Or we'll see them and some of our partners um, facilities doing the same exact work that they were doing with us. Mm -hmm. And it's great. Yeah. Well, I know when you mentioned the Castle of Our Skins, and I saw one of their concerts last year at Roxbury Community College because they're playing some earlier and, and contemporary music by mm -hmm. African-American composers. And this is the thing, you don't easily find it in a neighborhood setting. I mean, don't you feel that this is important? You're, you're making this available to people who wouldn't be able to get it elsewhere? Yes, most definitely. I mean, for me, I feel like Hibernian Hall is a hidden gem in the neighborhood, and especially when it had the history of all the other ballrooms that were there. So the fact that we're still standing and it's basically restored and, and it's accessible for our community members, I mean, it's a great way for us to just um, allow that and accept that and share that with our community. And we're also an economic development program for Madison Park, so that's one way that we are, you know, striving. Creating access. Mm -hmm. right. You know, you want to make these things possible, but you also need some support, <laughs> some mm -hmm. revenue maybe. And that means you think about that when you design the membership. Uh, so what, what possibilities are out there for people? Most definitely. I mean, we just, we, we well, we revised it a little bit. And it's one way for us to support the arts in the community. So we have four tiers. We have one for the young people, which is like $10. We have for older adults, 25 um, adults that are interested, individuals 50, and then for organizations about 250. And finally, uh, you've got the uh, preview night coming up on the 5th. Anything you can tell us about a little bit more about when and where exactly? Oh yes, um, Rocks on the Art, Art on the Rocks, sorry. Um, March 5th, 6 to 9, I have Bernie and Hall. And basically we have food from Fresh Generation, which would be our catering. And then we'll have some nice little libations for folks who want to join us and then also join us friends of our Hibernian Hall. And I know you've got either a website or social media people can check out too? Yes, uh, www.madison-park.org. Um, you can go on our tab of Hibernian Hall and check out all of our events. Thank you both very much, Ola Wumi, Aki and Wumi, and Asad Hardwick from Hibernian Hall. Thank you. We'll have more news in just a moment.